As the sun set on the quiet college town of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, a sense of unease began to settle in. It was March 2008, and the community was reeling from the brutal murder of one of their own, Eve Carson, a beloved student leader and the student body president of the University of North Carolina. Eve Carson could easily have been described as an example of how close to perfect a student can get. Born on November 19, 1985 in Athens, Georgia, Eve was a student at Clark Central High School, where she was elected student body president and awarded class valedictorian. She was also a member of the school's academic team and vice president of the school's National Honor Society. Eve spent most of her time volunteering as a peer educator at the Athens Area Attention Home, a safe house for abused and runaway teenagers. She worked at the University of Georgia's research laboratory as a lab assistant. Eve Carson also volunteered with children. She was an assistant coach for the Girls on the Run program. In addition to coaching, she taught science to elementary school students as part of UNC's Inspired program. If that wasn't enough, she tutored middle school students. On the morning of March 5, 2008, Eve's life took a sudden turn when she was murdered in cold blood. Her body was found lying on a street about a mile from campus. She had been shot multiple times. Prior one day before her murder, Carson attended a basketball game with her friends where the University of North Carolina Tar Heels played Florida State. Her friends invited her to hang out after the game, but Carson declined. She said she had to get home and study. Carson went directly to her apartment. At 1.30 a.m., Justin Singer, Carson's roommate, went out leaving Carson studying home alone. At 3.30 a.m., UNC student Caroline Harper was on the phone parked in the parking lot of the Pi Beta Phi sorority house near East Rosemary Street, where she saw two men staring right at her 15 feet away from her car. Concerned for her safety, she drove off. 3.37 a.m. was the last time Carson used her computer. On the night of March 4, 2008, a day before the gruesome murder of Eve Carson, Lawrence Alvin Lovett Jr. had called one of his friends, Jason McNeil, to drive him and his friend to Chapel Hill, where they were planning to find someone to rob. Jason declined. This caused Lovett to drive his mother's car to Chapel Hill, where he and Demario James Atwater met up. Both men were out on bond, and both were very low on cash. Rather than working for some money, they decided they would take the easy way out. On March 5, 2008, Atwater and Lovett spotted Eve home alone. They decided she was an easy target. Within minutes, they broke into her home, had her at gunpoint, and walked her outside to her car. They forced their way into her Toyota Highlander, with Lovett finding his way into the driver's seat and Atwater staying in the back seat. Both men forced Eve into the back seat, where Atwater held her hostage at gunpoint. After repeated threats by Atwater and Lovett, Eve was scared for her life and decided to give in to their demands. The evil duo drove around with Eve to several ATMs where they would attempt to withdraw the money in her account. At 3.55 a.m., Lovett and Atwater had succeeded in robbing Eve of $700 at an ATM in the University Mall in Chapel Hill. Lovett would later tell one of his friends that Eve was trying her best to reason with them. Eve would tell them that they did not have to do what they were doing. Eve begged Lovett and Atwater to spare her life, telling them that they could take anything they wanted. Sadly, all her pleas were in vain, as the duo had already made up their minds that they were going to take her life. The men knew Eve had seen their faces and couldn't take a chance of her identifying them to police. They took Eve to a densely wooded neighborhood about a mile from the UNC to murder her. Eve soon realized that Lovett and Atwater had made their minds. Despite the turmoil she must have felt, she asked her captors to pray with her. The men disregarded her request and shot her five times. She suffered shots to her right shoulder, right upper arm, right buttock, and right cheek. The murder weapon was a 24 caliber handgun. During her autopsy, the doctors found blood in her lungs, indicating she was still alive and breathing after being shot multiple times with the handgun. The fifth and fatal shot she suffered was discovered to have been from a sawed-off 12-gauge shotgun. The bullet from the gun went through Eve's right hand as she tried to shield herself 
and then entered her right temple and brain. According to a forensic psychologist and criminal profiler, he proclaimed the culprit at hand showed a complete lack of regard for human life. Eve's body was found at approximately 5 a.m., two hours after the incident at an intersection between Hillcrest Circle and Hillcrest Road, after authorities responded to reports of gunshots from a woman who lived around the area. The witness later testified that she had heard a gunshot, followed by the voice of a woman's scream. Finally, three more shots were shot in rapid succession. Eve's body was found tilted on her left hip with her right arm bent behind her head. Her body was later identified by her roommate. On June 27, 2008, three months after the murder, there was finally new information released. Details confirmed that $1,400 in total were withdrawn from ATMs using Carson's card over two days after the shooting. They also revealed that Atwater admitted to being the suspect attempting to use the ATM card in a security video taken in a local convenience store. It was also confirmed that Lovett was indeed the person pictured in the original ATM surveillance photograph. First-degree murder charges were filed against Demario James Atwater, who was 21 years old at the time. Lawrence Alvin Lovett, who was 17 years old at the time, was arrested and similarly charged the following day. On July 7, 2008, both men were indicted on additional charges of first-degree kidnapping and armed robbery. However, as a result of the Roper v. Simmons ruling, Lovett could not face the death penalty as he was under 18 at the time of the crimes. In 2010, Atwater pleaded guilty to the charges. This meant the death penalty would not be pursued by the state. Judge James A. Beatty of the United States District Court in Winston-Salem sentenced him to life in prison plus 30 years. At the sentencing hearing, Atwater turned to Carson's parents and said, I'm sorry for everything that happened. No matter what the court did today, it would be far from anything I should receive. I'm sorry. Carson's parents declined to speak during the hearing. Atwater is currently serving his sentence at the United States Penitentiary, a high-security federal prison in California. Atwater's accomplice, Lovett, who was 17, pleaded not guilty to state charges. Lovett remained in custody, awaiting his trial, which began on December 6, 2011. He declined to testify during the trial. On December 20, 2011, a jury found Lovett guilty of all charges. Since Lovett was underage when the crime took place, he was also sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Neither Lovett nor Carson's parents spoke during the sentencing hearing. On June 3rd, a resentencing hearing was held. The only thing Lovett had to say was, you know, people make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. I'm not the monster that y'all made me out to be. Judge Alan Bedore sentenced Lovett once again to life in prison. Orange County District Attorney Jim Woodall said that Lovett was a predator and that he did not care about the consequences of his actions or other people. In 2014, the North Carolina Court of Appeals upheld Lovett's sentence. Lovett was also charged with the January 2008 murder of a 29-year-old Duke University engineering student, Abhijit Mahato, but he was found not guilty in July 2014. Lovett is currently serving his life sentence. He was previously imprisoned at Pasquotank Correctional Institution, a close and minimum custody prison in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Lovett misbehaved and threatened to harm the staff. Lovett is now serving his sentence at the Noose Correctional Institution. After her death, Eve was awarded the Chancellor's Award for Most Outstanding Women in the Senior Class by the University of North Carolina. Today, her legacy lives on at the university. The university has established a scholarship in her name called the Eve Carson Scholarship. They introduced the Eve Carson Memorial Run, the Eve Carson Garden, and even a distinguished lecture series in her name. Eve's funeral brought hundreds together, and her service in Chapel Hill had more than 10,000 people attend. To this day, many remember her face and name around campus. It's hard to tell where Eve would be now if her life hadn't been cruelly cut so short. She was interested in science policy and planned to pursue further higher education after graduating from UNC. She also accepted a job at McKinsey & Company as a management consultant. This young woman was clearly destined for a great career in life. We can't control what happens to us in life, 
However, there are a variety of things we can do to better our situation, and as far as Eve, she always made the best out of hers. As we close today's stories, it's important for us to remember that each victim of violence is more than just a statistic or a news headline. They're human beings with families, friends, and dreams that were never made a reality. What were your thoughts on this case? Let us know below.